If it's good enough to praise, it's also good enough to parody. Hello, this is TJR, and for as long as I can remember, I have always enjoyed and loved great parody. Unfortunately, though, too often, parody has been a genre co-opted by hacks who only look on a very surface level at what they are satirizing. But truly great parody requires a deep and in-depth knowledge of what you're satirizing. Sometimes great parody can be bitingly vicious, and other times it can be filled with a deep love and admiration for its subject matter. And my admiration for the Beatles is huge, but I don't think anybody or anything is above parody. And that's why today I'm going to discuss what I believe are the best Beatle parodies ever. Now, before we begin, remember, this is just my personal list. If you feel there was something that I left out, please let me know in the comments. Frank Zappa, we're only in it for the money. What's there to live for? Who needs the Peace Corps? We're Only In It For The Money is an album by Frank Zappa. It was released in 1968. Originally, the album's title was going to be No Commercial Potential, but Zappa changed it after the release of the now legendary Sgt. Pepper album because he believed the Beatles were insincere and only in it for the money. Now, Zappa took direct aim at the Beatles by parodying both the front and interior cover of Sgt. Pepper with his release. This made him the first artist within popular culture to parody the now iconic Sgt. Pepper cover, and he would be followed by scores of imitators in the decades to follow. So for this reason alone, we're only in it for the money, makes the list. By the way, Zappa's cover parody was inverted, against his wishes I will add, by the record label upon its original release. The picture of the band members wearing women's clothing against a yellow backdrop was used as the exterior cover image and was supposed to parody the interior image of the Fab Four in their Sgt. Pepper uniforms, with the front cover parody printed on the inside. I'm not sure why the record label did this. Perhaps they were fearful of some kind of legal reprisal, but later reissues of the album reestablished these two parody images in their proper context. As for the album's music, well, Zappa and I may not see eye to eye on the music of the Beatles, but... I can't say that he didn't have any understanding of the culture that surrounded the time period he was satirizing. And while the album art is definitely parodying the Beatles, musically, the album is taking lyrical aim at both left and right wing politics of the time, while also making a pointed effort to satirize both the hippie subculture alongside the music industry and music artists that he felt capitalized on that subculture. The Magical Misery Tour from the National Lampoon Radio Dinner Album. Genius is pain. Genius is pain. Released in 1972, this was the National Lampoon Magazine's first album of recorded comedy. On this album, there are actually a number of subtle and not-so-subtle jabs at George Harrison's Concert for Bangladesh, The Paul is Dead Conspiracy, and McCartney's recording of Give Ireland Back to the Irish. But track four, an original parody song entitled Magical Misery Tour, is the album's real gem when it comes to Beatle parodies. This song does a brilliant job of sounding like one of John Lennon's post-solo tracks. It features actor Tony Hendra, who does a great musical interpretation of John Lennon, and musician Melissa Manchester, making a brief spoken word appearance as Yoko Ono. The dream is over. The song's lyrics are a send-up of John Lennon's primal therapy-inspired songwriting and his 1970 Rolling Stone interview, later published in book form as Lennon Remembers. In the song, he trashes everyone from his fellow Beatles, Mick Jagger, hippies, and his and Yoko's critics. Warning, this song is not safe for work, and unfortunately, there is a weird edit in the remastered version. At first, I thought it was an attempt at censorship, 
but the entire album is filled with expletives, including one that gets clipped out of the remastered streaming version. Track 8, which features a parody of Joan Baez, features even more offensive language than the Magical Misery Tour, so I have to assume that it's just a glitch. I will leave a link where you can hear it on YouTube, unedited with lyrics. We are all Gumby, from the album Gumby. I'm not green and you're not green, but he is green and plasticine to boot. Released in 1989 and produced by Shepard Stern, Gumby is a musical tribute to Art Cloakey's stop-motion animated series of the same name. The album features two Beatle parodies. First, the album's plain cover, with white substituted for green, and the word Gumby embossed to one side, is an obvious parody of the White Album. But more importantly is track 9 entitled We Are All Gumby, written by Michael Silvershear and Jeff Borgson, hopefully I've said that correctly, and performed by the comedy rock duo Flo and Eddie. Honestly, someone on YouTube who has too much time on their hands needs to grab a whole bunch of Gumby footage and create an unofficial music video for the song. Because as both a mashup of parody and homage, it's absolutely brilliant. We Are All Gumby musically and lyrically parodies and calls out Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, Strawberry Fields Forever, I Am the Walrus, and even throws in a little bit of Give Peace a Chance, just for good measure. At one point, a background voice even cries out, I buried Pokey. The Beatniks, Stairway to Heaven. I have heard that at one point, a few YouTube videos actually tried claiming that this was an actual rare recording of the Beatles covering Stairway to Heaven. Maybe they were trying to pull a fast one, or maybe they were just being ironic, or perhaps they really thought it was true. But it's actually performed by the Australian Beatles tribute band, The Beatniks, featuring Bruce Coble as John, Stephen Shipley as Paul, David Wood as George, and John Taylor as Ringo. No, not that John Taylor. The band's rendition is an hysterical mashup that imagines what if the Beatles had composed Led Zeppelin's legendary Stairway to Heaven, performed in the early 90s on the Australian TV show The Money or the Gun, and to the best of my knowledge, it has only been available to hear on YouTube. What I love about this Led Zeppelin cover is how well these four musicians completely retrofitted it to sound like an early Fab Four studio recording. So much so that the uninitiated might consider the possibility that perhaps Zeppelin's recording of Stairway to Heaven was the actual cover. Beatallica. Metallica is a mashup band from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. They have released three EPs, A Garage Day's Night, Metallica, and Winter Plunderland. Four length albums, Sergeant Hetfield's Motor Breath Pub Band, Masterful Mystery Tour, Abbey Load, and The Devolver Album, and the maxi single, All You Need Is Blood. Picture, if you will, a Metallica, different from the one we all know and love. A Metallica from an alternate universe where the Beatles never existed, and yet somehow the songs of the Fab Four were channeled and made real by Metallica, who, in their confusion, mashed them together with their own songs, giving birth to such tracks as Blackened in the USSR, and Justice for All My Loving, and The Thing That Should Not Let It Be. Metallica features amazing musicianship and deaf skill, combining the musicality of both these amazing bands. And they are a must-hear. Princess Leia's Stolen Death Dar Plans by Palette Swap Ninja. Julie, come 
here, no wait, they'll hear, blast the doorway. Listen here, hon, cause from now on, do what I say. Let's be honest, Star Wars parodies are a dime a dozen. But a musical parody of the Fab Four Sgt. Pepper album themed to Star Wars? This is no small feat. Princess Leia's Stolen Death Star Plans is a track-for-track track parody of the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, wherein each song sequentially tells the entire story of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, from start to finish. To me, just getting all the musical elements of Sgt. Pepper correct is impressive enough. To then work the lyrics to fit the framework of those songs and tell the story of one of the most famous motion pictures in history is absolutely mind-boggling. Princess Leia's Stolen Death Star Plans is not authorized, but it is available to download if you know where to look. And it's nothing short of brilliant. The Ruddles. All you need is cash. Let's be natural. This is the big one, the granddaddy of all Beatle parodies. This 1978 TV movie was co-written by Monty Python alumni Eric Idle and Neil Innes. Hopefully I've said that correctly. A mockumentary tracing the career of the fictitious English rock group, The Ruddles. The film takes each major event in the career of the Beatles' history and satirizes it in true English Monty Python style. The movie also includes performances by original SNL cast members John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, and Bill Murray, and cameos by George Harrison, Ron Wood, and Bianca Jacker in fictional roles. Who hurt Stig? One of the girls. Who? Big Valerie. We're very upset, but there's not much we can do about it. Why not? Well, she'll thump me. And Mick Jagger and Paul Simon as themselves. We were living in, you know, squalor. We didn't have any money and we saw these, there were the rattles on the TV with girls chasing them. We thought, this can't be that difficult. So we thought we'd have a go ourselves. Within its 76 minute runtime, the film manages to successfully hit and satirize every well-known historical beat within the Beatles chronology, giving each moment its own Python-esque skewering. What are you doing this for? We're doing this for peace and basically to show that the world is, you know, going astray and it's thinking. Um, what are you doing? We are getting wet. But the comedy, while brilliant, is only one component to why this film works so well. The other component is the film's accompanying soundtrack that features amazingly era-accurate parodies and mashups of classic Beatles songs written by Neil Innes and featuring musicians John Halsey and Ricky Fattar, who also appeared in the film as members of the Ruddles, and featured orchestral arrangements by film composer John Altman. The album was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Comedy Recording of the Year. And while the Ruddles film is one of the best movie parodies I've ever seen, I don't think that word accurately describes its accompanying soundtrack album. Now, it's true, I can hear direct one-to-one -one comparisons in some of the album's tracks. Ouch is Help. Double Back Alley is Penny Lane. And See How the Good Times Roll is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. But so dedicated was Neil Innes in his attention to musical detail when he recorded this album's songs that when I listen to them without the film, they don't sound so much like parody as they sound like the songs of the Beatles from an alternate reality. Similar but different, to the point where they transcend the title of parody. I should also add that Innes, Halsey, and Fatar would later reunite without Eric Idle for the follow-up CD, Ruddles Archaeology. So there you have it. Those are what I feel are the best Beatle parodies ever. Do you have some favorites that I missed? please let me know in the comments. As always, if you like what I do here, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. And now, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are helping me to make more videos. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please go to patreon.com forward slash TJR the original and make a monthly pledge. 
Patron supporters receive exclusive weekly videos not available here on the channel, and they also get exclusive advanced access to select videos. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to read your comments. Take care. Bye-bye.